Hi guys, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. This is part 13, which is either going to make or break this little project. Is it superstitious or not? Uh, found a block of aluminium that's going to clean up to the right size. And we're going to put a couple of neo magnets in there. If we have a look there, this little machine works fine just by holding a couple of magnets by hand and all it needs a magnetic insulator to hold them up and to keep them in place. The steel one's not going to work and as someone pointed out and I did do some reading on that afterwards the secondary coil for a dynamo is going to need exciting manually which yeah isn't a huge deal but I think we're probably just going to do go with this and clean up another magnet put some a, another stator and, and put a couple of magnets in it and we're going to go with that so I found a block of aluminium in the scrap box. It's way too big so I'm just parting the end off it, the centre. Someone mentioned in a comment that they didn't think that the square section would part off like that but it's probably the easiest way to trim it off square. It's fairly quick, especially in aluminium. Even this little lathe manages that. So I'm going to go through and part this off and we're going to square this block up. So, so far that's that side, and that side, and that side, and the other side. We've still got two edges to do here, and we can start marking it out. So all squared up and marked out, next thing is to bore the holes. I'm probably not going to show you too much of this because you've seen it all before, and have a look at video one and two of this little engine build. Um, if you want a bit more of a look at how I made this, but let's get in and fix it. So there we go. I said that later I've got an aluminium piece exactly the same or nearly exactly the same anyway probably a little bit better and closer on spec than the steel one and with a couple of magnets on it this runs which I'm happy with and we'll have a look at that in a minute we've still got to bore these and I've got a stack of rare earth magnets here which are 12 millimeters by 4 millimeters, they'll fit there nicely. Now, with a piece of aluminium behind it, one of them's insulated enough not to work. If we just put one there, if we put three there, it seems to have reasonable flux. So we need to remove the the insulation barrier there completely. What you find is if we put these on here. And they, they lock on okay but we've got absolutely zero flux there so we just can't this magnetic force just disappears into the metal and there's nothing there so that just spins and that's really not going to work We put this in with the aluminium. Hold it in place. We've got a reasonable amount of flux. With two of them, one each side. Put some each side like that. Then that's pretty healthy. Probably hardly enough, but if we put this here with a sheet of paper or plastic between it, we can't hold it. And 
and about a two mil gap there's no way in the world we can turn that so one of these should be plenty what we need to do is to hollow this out and we've had a bit of a think about this what we need to do is hollow this out to fit the magnet in there just under the flush and I'm going to epoxy him in because with these magnets just sitting on here and electrical tape around it, it will run, but they hammer backwards and forwards because yeah, they stretch the electrical tape, four or five layers of it, just like this. So there's a fair bit of force on them. And I figure if they can't move, that would be better. I'm going to epoxy them in and file them all up flash. Then we're going to make a couple of little brass plates to go on here, one on each side with a couple of screws. Just to stop them moving or, or dislocating or, or coming adrift. So that's the plan. So these are in here. But we've got holes on each side nice and flat they go in under flush it's a bit of room around them for epoxy each side put this in here we've got good flux it's pretty nice actually I reckon that's pretty good So, next job is to get these somewhere near the middle and epoxy them. What I'm probably going to do is just put something underneath so that I can position them. And that'll move around there nicely, just to hold itself in position wherever you want to put it. We'll get them located. And mix up some epoxy, fill up the holes, and let it dry. So while we're waiting for a coat of undercoat to dry, because I picked up the wrong can, it says epoxy enamel, but it also says it takes 16 hours to dry, and I didn't read that bit. Uh, I thought I'd have a look at some some name plates. We need a couple of little plates and this is just on the steel magnet to show you. We need a couple of little plates here to hold the magnets in place just with a couple of screws. And I thought well why don't we make them north and south. So that's what I've done and they won't look out of place at all there. And I've also done one for the top here that says Prince, which is a bit cute. Now I've cut a piece of brass, a nice piece of leftover scrap engraving brass, which has still got the plastic on it actually, but we'll peel that up and polish it up in the next little while. That's the next job. And I know you're expecting some hand engraving and I did sit down at work today and engrave two plates that look something like these two. And they look okay but for some reason while I was transferring it I got my S back to front so I'd have to start again. And what I've got is some press and peel PCB film which is just an iron on laser print resist film for printed circuit boards. I'm going to clean this up nice and polish it up and get it nice and clean with no fingerprints or anything. And we're going to print them on here because I've done the artwork in Photoshop. And hopefully we're going to etch them and then cut them out around the, around the etch lines. Put some paint in them and then screw them on. So that's the next job. 
So we'll get in and we'll peel the plastic off this and we'll find some fine wet and dry and give these a good clean up. And then a good wet wash up with some vinegar and some and a scouring pad. And some dish soap. And we'll look at etching them. So first step is to get this nice and clean. I've given this a scrub up with some vinegar and just a scotch bright. Try not to get any fingers prints on it now. And that's nice surface, that's what we're looking for. And next one some soapy water. And then a rinse into nice clean water. And put that somewhere to dry. We've had a nice clean tea towel to give him a pat dry. And we're starting to look like that might etch. Next job I've got some film printed. And it was a bit of fiddling around to get this to run through the laser printer. But it did okay. And we've got the dull side printed and that needs to go face down on the job so very carefully with a hot iron So up to temperature for a bit and that was pretty sort of trouble free. I've given them a bit of a clean up with a scriber just around straighten the corners and the lines up a bit. But they might etch up alright. Worst case scenario I can just engrave around the corners and, and straighten the lines up by hand when we're done if they're a bit jagged. But that's what you get peeled off. It's just peeled off the top. It's a cold run in water and a rinse. No fingerprints on that yet. So we should be about ready to etch that. We've got some ammonium persulfate because ferric chloride is sort of hard to get and it's not real good down the drain. So you mix that up five to one. And give him an hour or so to etch I guess. So I've got the solution mixed up in here, 5 to 1 by weight, and I've got hot water in the outside tub. The last job I've done is just put a black electrical tape on there to stop the back etching. We'll drop him in. It needs to be agitated and it might take a while to etch. A bit more in-depth detail on this process is a really good video by Clickspring. I'm sure you've all seen it. Uh, he's done a clock dial and done a nice job. I'm suspicious that his finished result wasn't entirely due to the etching process, but he has done a really nice job of that and it's well worth a look.
I'm going to leave this for a bit and agitate it every now and again. We'll have a look when we when we're getting closer. So a couple of hours later, and some. No polish remover to remove the the resist. They're really not too shabby. We've got about 0.3 of a millimetre, which is about 12 thou, I guess, undercut, which is well enough, well and truly enough to feel. three little plates. Next job will be to cut them out and to drill some holes and then just spot them onto there like such. So a bit of hacksaw and some firework and we'll have another look. Finish them pretty straightforward. I've just got a bit of high speed steel there and the fire won't touch it and set that up nice and parallel on the on the edge you don't want a file to and that'll take it down quick as anything Nice and square and straight. So a lot of messing around later. This is what I've got. Two little plates on there. One there and one there. Magnets all in place. It's got good flux. Commutator's grabbing a little bit there. We might have to just sort that out when I'm setting it up. I just put it on there temporarily. It's just a fraction tight in here somewhere. But that's the new magnet. We've sorted that out. Big thanks to anyone who went to the trouble on YouTube of commenting and offering some sort of advice or ideas. It's all very helpful in troubleshooting them and most of the things that have been mentioned I did try before I got to this. And so far it's looking pretty good. So there'll be one more video. And there's some finishing touches. I've got just seems like screws to change over there. And it needs a pulley, it needs, we need to decide whether this plate, which actually etched a little bit deep, might be something that we do again, or whether we use this one. And we're going to need some paint, and setting it up, we're going to need some thumb wheels, just things like that. So, one more video and I think we're done. But thanks for watching, and... It's more soon, guys.